Imagine the life without internet. I mean, no Facebook, no memes, no online shopping, no video calling, no YouTube. Wait, that doesn't look like YouTube, does it? Yeah, there we go. That's the logo of YouTube. In short, no internet means no connectivity. Life would have been very harder if there is no internet. So we use internet a lot and it's our responsibility to get to have a basic idea or understanding about how internet works. Well, don't worry. After you watch this video, you will be getting a basic understanding or a basic idea about how internet works. Hopefully. Let's say you're in India and you're writing an email to your friend who is located in New York and maybe you even put some images or documents as attachments to the mail and uh, once you are done writing your email or once you click on that send button uh, your friend who is located in New York is going to receive the message or the email which was sent by you in a matter of seconds in the next few seconds I mean literally in a matter of seconds your friend who is sitting in New York received the mail which you sent you know let me just search the distance between India and New York distance between India and New York well yeah that that seems to be a lot of distance between you and your friend you know yeah India and New York are really far you literally send the email uh, to a person who is located like 26,600 kilometers away from you in a matter of seconds how did this happen yeah of course we all know it happened because we are connected to internet but how did internet manage to send the email from us to our friend who is in New York? Well, we'll find the answer to this at the end of this video. So don't go away, just wait and we'll be find the answer. So what exactly is internet? Well, internet is a computer network. Then what is a computer network? Well, computer network is basically something that connects computers. Now let's say there's a computer one. This computer one can connect to a computer two either through a cable wire or through a wireless mechanism. In the same way, let's say there's a computer 3 and computer 1 can connect to computer 3 as well in the same way. Now the computer 3 can connect with computer 2 as well through the computer 1. So this makes a small computer network with three computers. So internet is one of the computer networks and indeed it is the largest computer that exists on the earth because it connects computers globally. I mean throughout the globe or at least places on the globe where humans exist. Now what if one computer wants to connect with another computer which is located somewhere else on the globe? The advantage of connecting computers globally is that one computer from one end of the globe can connect to another computer which is located on the other end of the globe. So all the computers which are connected to this global network can communicate and exchange information with one another. That's the whole point of internet. Now note, whenever I say computer, I'm not limiting it to just the personal computers or laptops that you use. Whenever I say computer, I mean any internet connected device. I mean any device which can basically access the internet. It includes smartphone, it can be a personal computer, it can be a Wi-Fi router, it can be a packet switch uh, on the internet, or it can be your camera which can access the internet. It can be any device which can basically access the internet, which has the internet feature with them. So when I say when one computer connects with another computer through another computer which is in between these two computers, the computer which is in between these two is actually called as router and the job of a router is to basically route the traffic from one point to another point, that is from the source to the destination. Now it makes sense. Now internet can also be referred to as network of networks. Let me give you an example. You might have a Wi-Fi connection at your office or at your home. When you turn your Wi-Fi router on, it's going to spread the Wi-Fi signals everywhere it can. We call this as local area connection. So you can connect your devices like your laptop or your mobile phones to the Wi-Fi which, uh, which is in your home or in your office. So when you connect to the, to the Wi-Fi router, you can access the internet through the Wi-Fi router. So if you could click closely here, your home has a network called a Wi-Fi network. This Wi-Fi network is connected to another network which is indeed the biggest network, the internet. So I guess you understood why I referred internet as network of networks because networks interconnect between themselves to make the communication more easier. Now let us go a little bit deeper into the concept of internet. 
even though you have no knowledge about internet, you must be knowing about something called as ISP, Internet Service Provider. Well, if you don't know what is meant by an ISP, an ISP is basically a company which give internet connection to your home. So when you subscribe to a subscription plan of your regional ISP, what they do is they, they come to your home and they give a connection to your home. So as soon as you get the connection, you'll be able to access the internet right away. Now let's see what actually happens once you get a connection from an ISP. Once you subscribe to one of your ISP's plan, they give a connection from your home to their headquarters. But wait, you're not the only one who has a connection to the ISP's headquarters. Your neighbor may choose the same ISP and once they subscribe to the same ISP, they have the connection to the ISP's headquarters as well. Now you're connected to your ISP's network and your neighbor is also connected to it. So now you can communicate through your devices to your neighbor's devices since you both are connected through the ISP's network. But well, what if you want to connect or communicate with someone else who is connected to a different ISP than yours? For this to happen, the networks of different ISPs must be interconnected with one another. Your ISP is connected to a higher ISP which we call as a NSP, Network Service Provider. Similarly, all the other regional ISPs connect to a higher ISP by paying them some amount of money. Now as you could notice, all the ISPs are interconnected with one another. Once again, all the higher ISPs or NSPs must be interconnected with one another to facilitate the communication between computers over the globe. Therefore, these higher ISPs or global ISPs or NSPs, whatever you call them, are interconnected with one another at internet exchange points. So the computers which are in the network of one NSP can connect or communicate with the computers which are in the network of another NSP through these internet exchange points. Note, there are many number of regional ISPs and there are many number of higher ISPs or NSPs throughout the globe and they are all interconnected in the same way. And by the way, sorry for the messy editing. Now, if you want to host your website on the internet, here is what you need to do. You need to get a connection from your web server to an ISP. This ISP in written is going to connect your web server into the internet. So anyone who is using the internet can now access your web server and thus they can see your website. Large companies like Google, Facebook, GoDaddy, etc. They have a large network where they have their numerous servers running. So what they do is they directly connect their network to the internet and they make themselves accessible to the internet. In this case, they themselves are the internet service providers and they don't need the help of any third party internet service provider. So if you want to communicate with the computer which is located in let's say New York, how do you know that the computer is located in New York? Well, for the same reason in order to know where a specific internet connected device is located, we use IP addresses. So IP addresses is basically they decide everything on the internet because they decide where a particular internet connected device is located on the internet. So if you want to communicate with a computer which is located in New York, you must know its IP address. The same is the case with all the websites. Each website has its own particular IP address. For example, google.com has a particular IP address and same is the case with any other website. So whenever you type in a website name in your web browser and when you click on go, the website name is going to be resolved into an IP address and the communication is made to that particular IP address. For example, whenever you type in google.com in your web browser and hit enter, this is what's going to happen. Your computer which is assigned a particular IP address is going to send a request into the internet which contains the routers and packet switches. Many web servers are connected to internet. For example, Microsoft servers, Facebook servers, Amazon servers, Google servers and millions of other web servers are connected to the internet. The routers and the packet switches which are inside the internet are going to take the request which is sent by your computer and they are going to check the destination IP address which is going to be the Google's IP address. Based on the destination IP address, these routers and packet switches, they are going to route the request to the destination because these routers and packet switches, they know where a particular IP address is located. And that is how the request made by you to google.com is sent to the Google servers but not to Facebook or Microsoft servers because we are using the concept of IP addresses. When you want to send some information to some other computer over the internet, the information doesn't pass through the internet as it is. 
Instead, it is going to be broken down into small pieces which we call as packets. And all these packets are going to travel through the internet to the destination computer. How do we know where the destination is? Well, we use the concept of IP addresses once again. That is why IP addresses are very important on the internet. So now that we have a basic idea about how internet works, let's try to break down and answer the question which is asked at the beginning of the video. How did internet manage to send your email to your friend who is located in New York within a matter of seconds? Your computer sends the email packets firstly to your ISP and from there the packets are routed to the higher ISP, in other words the NSP. From the NSP, the packets are then routed to the Gmail's network which contain Gmail servers. The packets of data are then resolved into the original email and this email is going to be saved in the Gmail servers. Now when your friend who is located in New York opens up his inbox, he is going to retrieve the email from Gmail servers in the same order like this. And finally, he will be able to see the email that you sent him in a matter of seconds. If you have this question, how is internet very fast? I mean, how are we able to connect or communicate with another computer on the internet very fast? Then the answer is because computers are very fast in nature. That is why we make computers, you know, to make our work easier and faster. So that is why communication on the internet is very fast because it's a computer network and computers are everywhere. They are trying to process everything and they do it very faster than us. That's why internet is very fast. So you might ask in a large computer network like internet, what if something goes wrong? I mean, what if a small part in the internet gets broken, like the connection between let's say from one server to a router is broken. Yes, uh, there can be packet loss on the internet and that is why we see these. Alright, so that is it for this video. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and if you don't like, leave a thumbs down below. And guys, you know what, you should share this video with your friends because your friends are using internet as well and it's their responsibility to know how internet works. So go ahead, share this video to your friends through WhatsApp, Facebook, you know, whatever and let them understand how the internet works. Alright, thanks for watching once again. Cheers, have a good day.